G'day everyone, Uncle Jojo, great to see you all again. I get asked heaps of questions about being so very good looking and about different types of foundations we do. I'm not gonna answer the questions on being so very good looking today. As far as foundations go, we need to make sure that we look at the different types of soil and the area that we're in to get the right types of foundation. A number of questions about foundations are in regards to how deep we need to go, how deep is deep enough, what type of site drainage do I need, can we do piers or can we do strip footings or can we do a waffle slab, waffle slab being just sits on the ground and doesn't get cut in, no strip footing. Today we're doing some strip footings and I'm going to show you just in this tiny area the different types of soil and the reaction of that soil in only a two day period and as we're digging still today. So we're clearing out the beams, the concrete beam areas. Some of the soil is super shaly so it breaks up really quickly and easily. Other is really clayey and holds together really well and some of it's really good topsoil which would make great soil for gardens, garden beds, all that kind of jazz. All that jazz. So check, check it, check this out. Here you can see all I've done is stick, stuck the shovel in here and this is breaking away like it's nothing. Now this soil here, see that, that just is peeling up. So this soil isn't going to be very stable for foundation work. We know we need to go a little bit deeper or we need to do massive strip footings like we've done here and then that all gets tied in together. So if anything moves, the whole thing moves as one. Things don't move by themselves. One way we could also go around this is to do piers, but they'd have to be probably 450 to 600 round diameter and I'd say 16 to 1800 deep. But now this is just a trench here, just over here, which is only two steps away, we've got perfect clay here, which is absolutely spot on, and then it gets really shaly again and starts to break. Now, we're, we're down, we've done a site cut of about 900 there, and then we've cut into this beamwork another 700 deep. So you're looking at that we're about 1700 down, and the clay down at 1700 is very different from one end to the other. The, also, the gradient of the whole property falls down from a high spot in the top northwest corner to the low spot in the southeast corner. If we pop over to the southeast corner, which is over here, it looks like almost all of the property is fill. Who's fill, you might ask? Fill is dirty fill. Nobody really likes fill, it's not stable. So here's all fill. You can see that we've got no clay whatsoever. It's just topsoil all the way through here. And so we step down and then we can cut across there. But the foundation work will be sitting up about this high around this edge. So it'll all tie in nicely. And then there's a 150 slab over the entire footing section over here. So there you have it, just in this small area, the soil changes three or four different times and then you've got all the variations in between that. So it's super important that you get a top quality geotech, so some geotechnical engineer, somebody that knows their soil and the area, and then you get an engineer that can, a structural engineer, that can go over that data and make sure, ensure, make sure and ensure that the foundation system that you're building for the home is one that'll suit the house and will last the tests of time. We love a house that lasts the tests of time. We don't want something that'll fall down in 15, 20 years. We want something that's gonna be standing for our grandkids 80, 100 years later. If you've got any questions about soil, soil types and areas, flick it over. I'll answer them for you best I can where I can. I don't know everything about soils. I'm not a specialist in soil. I just know the areas that I can build certain types of foundation works and certain areas where I can't. Thanks for watching and like always, stay on real banana peel and I'll see you in the soup.